Hello everyone and welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. I am Shane Thomas and today we are on episode number 160. We're going to be going over the Panelizer module today. And this is a module that I have just recently started to play around with and it's very powerful and it allows you to do a lot of cool things. So we're going to go over that and how you can use it to panelize your Drupal websites. As always, I'm Shane Thomas. You can follow me on Twitter at smthomas3. Also make sure to head over to codecrowdy.com, sign up for the newsletter, or look at the 5 Secrets to Becoming a Drupal 7 Ninja ebook. Let's go ahead and look at the Panelizer module and see what it can do. It's very, in some ways it's overlapping on what the Panels module allows you to do out of the box. However, it does allow you to do a lot of other very cool and more advanced things on top of what you what you get with the traditional panels module. So a few things you need to know. You need a new version of panels. You need C tools and page manager included with C tools enabled. And when you're installing, there's a few things you need to be wary of. So as you can see, I have we have our dev site here. I already have the panelizer module installed. Just check that box. But you'll also need to make sure you have panels installed and the page manager module that comes with CTools installed. And you'll want to make sure you come into structure pages and ensure that node view is enabled. So if it's not, you'll need to make sure you enable it so it shows up in black instead of gray here and then you should be all set and ready to start using the panelizer module so you can get to the panelizer configuration page of course from the modules page if you want just by clicking here or you can go to configuration content authoring panelizer so once we're in the administration page for panelizer you can see there's a few different options for you to look through here. It's all broken up by different entity types. So you have taxonomy, node, user. I believe you can use this with pretty much any type of entity. So we're going to go ahead and look at node just to keep it simple. And we're going to go ahead and panelize the article content type. So by default, I think when you panelize it, originally it's nothing else is checked so you go ahead and then save that after you panelize it now you can see there's a link here to start doing some configuration so if you click that it allows you to specify what type of content you want allowed inside your your panelizer so when when you are actually trying to configure how a specific node looks. In this case we're going to configure how an article looks. So the actual view or excuse me the actual node view of the article you can specify what should be allowed and I'll go ahead and we'll skip this for now and we'll come back to it because it'll make a little more sense once you see everything in action. So we're going to select full page override because we want to be able to override the entire page and we are going to go ahead and check both these and I'll explain what they do. This provide default panel this essentially allows you to do the same thing as just creating a specific node view template using the page manager. You can typically come in here you could add a new variant for your article content type and you could design out that page. If you're familiar with panels you'll know how that works. Panelizer allows you to do uh, something very similar in that when you click provide default panel it allows you to then configure how the article is supposed to look. So what we'll actually just take a look at that so you can see that it's very similar to what panels allows you to do out of the box. Now you can see if I click settings this looks pretty similar to what you've seen with panels before you can specify a CSS class and ID 
add some CSS code right there if you want. You can even disable blocks and regions. It allows context, just like panels, so you can add different relationships or link different uh, entity types or content types. You can specify the layout. We're going to go ahead and use a two column layout. And we'll let that convert over to the two column layout. And then when you get to content, it's just like you've seen with panels before. You can move the image around to the right side, for instance. You can see we have the body, tags, and links as well. So now, if we save that and we go to one of the article, the actual article content types, you'll see that we have the image on the right and the body and the links and tags on the left. And that applied to all of our articles. So you can see that's very similar to what you've done with panels before if you've looked at my other panels videos or if you've just been using panels for a while. So nothing too revolutionary yet. However, there's even more that you can do. And this is where it gets really, really powerful. So the next thing we can do is we can say we want to allow the panel choice. So we're going to save that and now we can click this list link and you can see there's the default one and this default one is the one we just configured so if we come in here and we go to content you'll see that the image is on the right side like we moved it previously but we can go ahead and add our own so let's say we wanted to add a version where the image is on the left side so I'm gonna go ahead and type in left side image and now I have the default where the image is on the right side. We also have the left side image. So if I want to go ahead and specify the layout, we'll go ahead and use a two column layout again. Click save. And we will keep the image on the left, but move everything else on the right. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and close out. You notice if we come in here, the image is still on the right. If we click edit, there is an option down here for panelizer. You can then specify that you want to use the left side image. And then you'll see the image moves to the left. However, if we go to one of our other articles, the image can still be on the right. So what this allows you to do is it really allows you to define different layouts for your content authors of your site. So if you have someone who's building out a bunch of the, the articles on your site and you want to give them a couple different options to choose from, you can, allow, you can easily set these up in, in the Panelizer module and then when they're building their content out, they can select how they want their content to display and everything will just happen magically for them. Let's also say, so as you can see, we have test article 2 where the image is on the right and we have test article 1 where the image is on the right let's say for some reason you wanted to just change this specific one if you click on panel panelizer you can come into here and you'll see it's using test article 1 and it's using the view mode status is at default if you go ahead and click content let's say we want to add in something else so we want to add in new custom content. We'll just say we'll just say this should now be overridden just so you can see and we'll add it in right above the image. Now if we close out of here, notice in the breadcrumb it's home test article one panelizer full page override. We're only doing this for test article one. So once we close out of here, you'll see I got this text here that I just added in. It's only on test article 1 because if I come back to test article 2, that is not showing up. If I click in panelizer, you'll see that it's this still shows as default on test article 2 and any other article on the site because I didn't actually change it for any article but test article 1. So if I come back into panelizer, you'll see now it says the status is custom. I can of course reset this and it'll go back to the default where this, as you can see through the gray here, this should now be overridden, it's going to go away. Now it's back to default, 
if I close out of this, you'll see it's now gone away and we have just our basic article with the image on the right side. So all in all that's very powerful on its own and there's even more you can do. So if we go back into the configuration for Panelizer, you can even specify what allowed content should be allowed when you are adding your different panes inside your panel. So what these things here allow you to do is it allows you to set what should be allowed when you're creating or adding things to your different panelized uh, panels I guess you can say. So for instance the allowed custom content if you uncheck that so you can see it should be unchecked right there now if we come in here there's no way to add custom content down here there's normally a link if we want to get that back we can come back into our panelizer and we want to reallow that Now if we come back in here, want to add, now you can see new custom content is now available. And this allows you to provide a slimmed down interface if you have certain individuals on your site that you want to be able to configure these different panels without giving them all of the options. As you can see when you come in here there's a lot of options to choose from. Using all those checkboxes you can hide a lot of the options so the user only sees what you want them to see. So this allows you a really flexible way to build out different interfaces and different pages on your site and provide a lot of flexibility for someone who might be doing the content authoring or the content creation on your site. This is only a little bit of what the Panelizer module can do. I could spend probably an hour or two talking about all the different features you can or how you can use it and how all the flexible things you can do with this module. So go ahead and check it out. This should give you the basic overview of what you can do with it. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at smthomas3 and check out my new ebook. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.